ladies and gentlemen, I know I've had people express concerns that um, whenever they deal with the system, when they deal with uh, Child Protective Services, DCFS, or whatever it is that you want to call it in your cities and your counties, that it seems like maybe they kind of are, are on their own agenda. Maybe they have, you know, uh, maybe they're, they're overbooked, like they're overworked, like they're taking on too many cases. And maybe they feel like they're not getting paid enough. I'm not really sure what the reason is, but I do know that a lot of places, especially like in uh, Cuyahoga County in Ohio, which is one of the standout places because it's a place I talk about a lot, but places like that definitely need some reform, okay? In this situation, you have this person who was taking this mugshot, this smile right here, and it really bothers me. And I want you guys to understand why it bothers me. Because this is one of your trusted um, officials from the Florida, let me make sure I say this right, Florida Department of Children and Family Services. And this individual has been arrested, and I want y'all to just hear the details. Now, this started about 13 months ago as a missing persons report. Heather, who was a 17-year-old girl who had been living in group homes in Flagler and Volusia counties, had run away from racetrack gas stations. So I don't know if y'all have a racetrack, but I've seen those gas stations on State Road 100, where she had been with her caseworker by the name of Deirdre Wade. Last week, the Florida Department of Law Enforcement reported Wade's arrest on charges of felony child neglect. Failure to report child abuse and providing a false report to law enforcement on this young girl. And these are the people that we are paying to try to get this thing right, to try to, to, try to help fix the problem, but yet they participate and become complicit and exacerbate a problem. I haven't used that word in a long time, exacerbate. But I think it's very, very just in this particular situation, okay? Now, let's keep going. Heather, the 17-year-old girl, had been drugged and raped. I repeat, the child in question has been drugged and raped during a runaway episode when she was 16 years old, according to FDLE. Hashtag not my words. The child notified that woman of the attack and her intent to run away because she wanted to get away from this violent, dangerous, uncomfortable, insensible situation, right? Most anybody could understand that. And I believe that most citizens would understand that you would try to help a kid in this type of situation. But neither of which Wade reported to law enforcement until roughly a whole month afterwards. But that was only a small part of a much larger story of apparent neglect and lack of supervision or protocols that might have prevented the girl from running away again and again from the agencies responsible for the child's welfare, the Daytona Beach-based Community Partnership for Children. Now, most of that was uncovered by Flagler, or Flagler, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, County Sheriff's Investigation, if not on a hunch, at least on the detective noticing almost as soon as the, the missing child report was filed that something was wrong. The case worker's claim made no sense. And detail after detail gathered from that point on only confirmed that something more serious was going on. Now what started with a missing child report in Palm Coast turned into nearly a year long investigation by Flagler County Sheriff's Office, Detective George I'm not going to even try to pronounce his name. Detective George H. I don't, I'm not, I can, hysterectomy? What is his name? H. Christopoulosos. What? Wow. I'm sorry, bro, but damn. Anyway, Detective George. So let's just call him Detective George. Based on who worked with the FDLE, then built its own case and arrested that chick right there smiling right on multiple occasions fdle reported wade was also complicit in the child running away 
and in covering it up from authorities, including failing to file and update timely missing child reports of the child under her care and lying to investigators. Now, as I'm giving y'all these details, y'all have to let me know what you think and what y'all think the appropriate charge should be. Like, what do y'all think her bail should be? How many years in prison do y'all think she should get behind these accusations if she's convicted, okay? Now, they said that she lied to investigators. Now, agents also found that she hid the fact that the child was living in a different county with an adult individual who was not cleared for foster care. And I have another question real quick for you guys that are listening. If you guys did not see the documentary and, and what's going on, let me give a shout out to my brother, Relationship Rehab. Um, shout out and salute to you, bro. If you guys have not checked him out, check his breakdowns out, man. I still watch my brother and support him. Y'all make sure and check him out. I had to shout him out. But if you guys have not watched that documentary, which talks about the corruption in the Child Protective Services, and shout out to Dana uh, Brockaway from the NAACP and Dear John, I remembered that off the top of my head, but she is an advocate more than anything for children as well. So if you guys have not watched that documentary on my channel, you must watch it because it talks about people just like this. This woman allowed this child to be in a different county where she was not cleared to be and was living with an adult individual who was not clear for foster care. Now, I have a theory. Can I tell you guys a theory of mine? Since this lady want to smile so big, like she looks like she needs that smile smacked off of her face by one of my good brethren and sisters out there, huh? I don't like the fact that when people do something to kids and then they have the audacity and like Stephen A. Smith says, the unmitigated goal to bring they, I'm gonna try not to cuss, to come in and do a mugshot picture and smile, knowing what you're accused of doing. Where is the, where is the, the smile? Where is the joy? Where is the appropriateness in a person smiling during a mugshot knowing that you're putting an individual child who can't speak for themselves nor defend themselves against the tyranny of their caretakers, knowing that you're complicit and putting them at risk. How do you smile like that? I don't get it. I don't see how you, I don't see how you sleep at night. But I'm going to tell y'all what my theory is. Are y'all ready? You better hold on to your britches for this one. Here we go. I believe that this woman with this pretty smile on her face put this 16 slash 17 year old girl in the hands of somebody that she was potentially dealing with either for one or two things either it was somebody she was involved with on a personal slash sexual level or she did it because she got paid. And I want y'all to understand, and I don't want to scare you guys, especially for those who might not be conspiracy theorists, but I'm going to warn you what I'm going to say might not sit well with your sensibilities. But we do know that there is a huge black market of children coming up missing. And children ending up in the sex trade. Children who have been kidnapped and disappear and go off of the radar for years until they end up in their 20s and 30s. And now you got to hear these wild stories about where they've been all this time. And one thing I would have to wonder is like, here's, here's my thing. I always point it back to the parents because I believe that the problem always starts at the nuclear level. Biological mother, biological father, where in the hell were they? Clearly, the mother and father or one or the other had this child taken from their custody because they were not suitable parents. That's where this starts. Way before it gets to this chick and way before it gets to anything that she did wrong, we have to always put this back into proper perspective and say, what did the parents do to lose their kids in the first place? Is that fair?
I think it's fair. If you don't think it's fair, then that probably is where we are, where we have a problem in America, where we continue to keep pointing the finger at everything else when we could point the finger at the source of the problem. Parents do what they're supposed to do. We don't end up in this situation. But I digress. Let's move on with this story. She hid the fact that this child was living in a different county with an adult individual who was not cleared for foster care. Now, CPC is one of the private contractors of the Department of Children and Families, which ultimately supervises all child welfare cases that typifies the child welfare system privatized in Florida since 1996. Now, one of the 19 such agencies in the state, CPC, a nonprofit, is primarily responsible for cases in Flagler, Fallujah, and Putnam counties. Now, its policies and procedures are currently under construction. I don't even know what that means. According to its website, and in 2020, it had 1,191 clients, according to its budget, which operated with 203 employees on a $38 million budget, paying its CEO $162,500. Boy, that's, man. Anyway, let's keep going. Now, what follows is an account of an investigation that led to her arrest, an investigation that points to caseworkers alleged criminal misconduct as much as it does at cracks in a child welfare framework that absent rigorous checks and balances enabled the girl to be out of supervision month after month, even though her caseworker allegedly knew where she was and how she would run away. And this is a very long story. Wow. Woo. Guys, I got to skip this. Some of this, they, they give a ton of details. We would almost need a whole separate live stream to talk about this, to be honest with you. It is just pages and pages. But let me read this last sentence. <sighs> Heather herself finally had her interview with child protect the child protection team on july the 2nd she turned 18 on october the 7th and immediately left her custodial home presumably returning to jacksonville florida the warrant for wade's arrest was signed on november the 10th i gotta skip all the rest of that because it's just it's a lot of details in there but let me let you guys hear the video and let me give you guys the fair usage Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use. It is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. And also, if you guys would, don't forget that we need to uh, get our thumbs up up and what that does is it just helps share our stream and it lets other subscribers know that we're live so if y'all would don't forget to hit, click that thumbs up let's get it a child drugged and sexually battered and the abuse was allegedly kept from law enforcement for weeks that's why florida department of law enforcement investigators say they arrested a contract worker who was handling cases for the department of children and families investigators say deirdre is supposed to be in charge of making sure the victim is being cared for properly instead they claim she was complicit in the child's mistreatment and hid inappropriate behavior and abuse from officials the child allegedly told Wade about trying to run away and being drugged and sexually assaulted. A month would pass, though, before Wade would notify the Flagler County Sheriff's Office about any of it. The child allegedly tried to run away several times, and each time, FDLE officials say it was hidden from authorities. Investigators say the suspect also hid the fact that the child was living in a different county than she was supposed to with someone who was not cleared for foster care. This booked into the Volusia County Jail on charges of child neglect, failure to report child abuse, and making a false statement to law enforcement, making a false statement to law on bond. Matt Lapoli, West 2 News. 
A child drugged and sexually battered, and the abuse was allegedly kept from law enforcement for weeks. That's why Florida Department of Law Enforcement investigators say they arrested a contract worker who was handling cases for the Department of Children and Families. Investigators say Deirdre was supposed to be in charge of making sure the victim was being cared for properly. Instead, one of the things that to me is probably one of the more disturbing details is the fact that this is a woman and you would think that women would stick together. You would think that if women need to be protected and uplifted and women need to be praised and put on this pedestal, why is it that we don't believe that girls fall under that category? Why is it that women can be treated as queens, but Apparently, a, print, a, a little girl can't be treated as a princess. And I don't understand how that works. How you could just skip the princess phase, end up being a queen, even, you don't, even though you don't have a king, and even though you don't have a kingdom to rule over. Like, I don't really understand how that whole concept works. You know, how you're talking about your uplifting, but then you forget about the kids. And I think that babies' lives matter more than anybody's does because us as adults, we can speak for ourselves, defend ourselves, and we can do what it is that we need to do. But kids cannot. They are at the mercy of us as caretakers. And if a situation gets so bad that the kids have to be taken out of the household, then we need competent people working in these child protective services systems that are not taking advantage of these kids. And I have no idea if this woman was even further causing this kid to be raped, be abused, or whatever the case is. But you guys can also go to the website where I found this article, which is at flaglerlive.com, F-L-A-G-L-E-R-L-I-V-E.com forward slash 1588 one seven forward slash way dash county dash partnership dash children that's exactly where you can find this article if you want to see the entire details it's a ton of details like a lot of reading that's why i couldn't do it for this particular story right now but you guys can see more details in there but again i think her bail which is what i was really really appalled by I'd have to look it up again, but I think her bail was like $2,500. Now y'all can correct me if I'm wrong if you look that information up and find out that it's incorrect, but I do believe it's incorrect. I think her bail was $2,500. If you get a bail bondsman, 10% of that, 250 bucks, she's back on the streets. And I don't know if that would put this case at risk if she still has access to their systems and logins or paperwork or whatever the case is, or even potentially the people that were involved in this could potentially make it harder to convict her of the charges that she's been charged on. But like I said, I think this person needs to be held responsible to, to the uh, fullest extent of the law. And matter of fact, to the people that raped that, that 16 year old, 17 year old girl or whatever age she is, Whatever charges that they face, I think that this caseworker should face those same charges for helping this to go along and potentially hiding it. Because I think that the person that sees something and does nothing about it should be held just as accountable as those who did it. That's the only way that I believe that we're going to get some accountability here in America. So I hope that they can find some help for that young lady and get some justice for her, not only against this person, but everybody else who participated in abusing that child. We're the AFC, where we believe that babies' lives matter and our children matter first, and that's why we're the AFC. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe.